All right, so boom. Let's talk about this Mason Rudolph, Miles Garrett situation. Cleveland Browns, Pittsburgh Steelers, kerfuffle, brouhaha, skirmish, straight up brawl on the field. All right, and I've seen a lot of people talk about it, and they're saying, well, you know, Mason Rudolph was the aggressor. He the one who got everything started. Uh, Miles Garrett, free Miles Garrett. He took it too far. He should be, he should be arrested. He should be jailed. Yo, Marquise Pouncey did the right thing. He shouldn't have got suspended. Yo, what about the dude who pushed Rudolph? He should. Let's just go piece by piece of what transpired. First and foremost, Miles Garrett hit Mason Rudolph late, right? He already got rid of the football. He got hit. Now, bang, bang, football play, right? When he was going to the ground, he did not release him. What happens after that? You see Mason Rudolph try to take off Miles Garrett's helmet. Completely wrong. Should be flagged, right? Nothing here warrants a suspension yet because there's nothing that is ridiculously physical that with, these are all in the in, in the realm of fines. I saw people talk about, well, Mason Rudolph kicked Miles Garrett in the nuts. Was not a kick. Look at it in real time. Look at it in slow motion. There was not no kick there. His foot was in the vicinity. But it was not extended to where if you look at it, you'd say, yo, he kicked him in the balls. That's not what transpired, all right? And on top of that, Miles Garrett did not say he got kicked in the balls either. So we can't necessarily say, oh, you put, put something that, that we think happened actually happened. Because that ain't what happened. All right. Now, when it comes to, well, what would make Miles Garrett that apoplectic? What would make him go on such a connection? Well, people thought that maybe Mason Rudolph said the N-word. That's not the case. A lot of people started talking about external things that got nothing to do with it. Well, you got to know uh, where his political affiliations is. You see, he supports this person. What the hell does that have to do with somebody getting hit with a goddamn helmet? Stay on what's transpiring in front of us, right? What happened? Miles Garrett proceeds to pull Mason Rudolph up by his helmet, right? Where his foot, Mason Rudolph's foot, is still extended. At this point, people would say, well, he did kick him in the nuts. Well, you're getting pulled up from where you are. It's not a kick. It's more of a press. But if that was happening, that's only happening because he's getting pulled up by his face man. There's no other place for his foot to go. If you look at the, try it at home. Try to put a helmet on. Try it at home. Try to get somebody to pull your helmet up while your foot's in that area. It's not going to be able to go anywhere else, right? Not to exonerate Mason Rudolph of his foot being in that area. But from this point, Mason Rudolph's helmet is pulled off. Chin strap was still strapped on. So pulling the helmet off, there's a lot of twisting that can happen with your neck here. Okay, we talk about neck injuries. You look at what happened with, uh, was it Michael Irvin whose neck had a problem and then he ended up having to retire? Also, um, what happened with Sterling Sharp? He got hit, bam, and then all of this, one of the reasons why he could not play anymore, right? <laughs> that happens. Helmet was dislodged. Then, David DeCastro is pushing Miles Garrett back. Mason Rudolph chases Miles Garrett to get his helmet back. Now, granted, Understanding the situation, if you're Mason Rudolph, you see how big Miles Garrett is. You see this man is an absolute monster when it comes to not getting to the court. I believe he was like third in the league in sacks. He was leading the AFC in sacks coming into the game. So, it's asinine to sit there and say, well, in your right mind, you're going to go and chase after somebody. But, Mason Rudolph said after the game, I will not be bullied. So, there's somebody who, he's pretty much David, ready to fight against Goliath. He want the smoke, right? Pull up. Got no helmet on. What does Miles Garrett do? This is when everything changes. Because he swung the helmet with reckless abandon. It's not as if he just, once he got up, he swung it. He took a couple of steps back, proceeded to go and swing it. This was something that, it, you can't tell me, oh, I'm at, if he just got up, picked up the, he had the helmet, swung it immediately like that, that's completely different. He took a couple of steps and then swung it. The helmet now becoming weaponized and connecting. This is where whatever happened beforehand goes out the window because it got taken to a whole different level. Look at it like this. If we had a party, right? You shove me. I shove you. You punch me. I shoot you. Does a shove, shove, punch, shoot? Does that sound like the right sort of progression? So I'm on top. You twist my helmet. All right, I may or may not put my foot into your, you know, uh, your, 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 your pelvic region. All right, you dislodge my helmet, proceed to weaponize it and throw it in my head. Let, now, this is, I don't like to get into the what ifs, but let's just say it was a crown of the helmet that hit Mason Rudolph's head. If he falls right there, his head splits open. 
or man gets severely concussed, or man gets knocked out, or he messes around and dies. Are we saying that's all justified for him charging at Miles Garrett? Are we just looking at this from a street sort of mentality versus this is an employee of an organization? Technically, not only your teammates, but your opponents are also your co-workers. Right? So this is something that is a place of work. You just turn something into a weapon and pretty much tried to straight you, you not really try. You assaulted this man. That's what it is. It's literally what it is. We've seen countless times at the end of plays, players jawing at each other, right? There's been times where players have taken helmets off. You've seen Cortland Finnegan versus Andre Johnson. They took their stuff and started fighting. Not once did somebody grab the helmet. This did not happen. There's a huge difference all right now once that transpired marquise pouncey comes and he starts doing the ground and pound trying to sell beats by dre shortly before christmas or black friday to miles garrett okay takes him to the ground starts punching and kicking what does this happen because offensive linemen protect their quarterback was he wrong yes was it justified absolutely that attempt of the kick to the head that's kind of far but the punching and kicking i understand should he be suspended without question him being suspended do i think it was wrong no not at all should he appeal it and probably win he'll probably get reduced from three games to one but from where we stand and what transpired a lot of people talking about well miles garrett had to defend himself he was behind two offensive linemen it's not like those two offensive linemen were straight up beating him up once they picked him up that's not what happened that's not what happened it's not like someone was getting shoved left and right david de castro was simply pushing him back there wasn't no punching or elbowing or nothing like that, all right? The issue was only between Rudolph and Miles Garrett. People calling for Rudolph to be suspended for trying to twist and pull off the helmet. I believe he should be fined without question. A suspension? Probably a game. I think it would be a bit excessive, but given what could happen with the twisting of the helmet and the neck and everything, I understand. But to, to say that it warrants the same suspension as Garrett, that's asinine. There's no question that Garrett went way too far. Now, I understand football is a gladiator sport. I get But you cannot sit here and try to defend somebody swinging a helmet. And this ain't no, well, he's a Pittsburgh Steeler person. So I love violence in the game. I love people getting knocked out. I love when it's played the right way. But when it comes to fighting and everything, this this going too far. That's like trying to defend and Dominican Sue for stepping on somebody. That's like trying to defend Albert Hayes or Albert Hainsworth for giving somebody the goddamn curb stomp in 2004. This 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 is going wait. There's nothing that you can do to defend it. Did Mason Rudolph get everything started with trying to twist to, to twist the helmet? Without question. However, does that warrant? The removal of his helmet only to get freaking whack-a-mole on the top of his head and just disregard the danger of what could have transpired? No. So, bottom line, Garrett being suspended for the entire season and having to reappeal for next year, I think that's warranted. Pouncey getting three games, I get it. And more importantly, um, that other Browns player, I forget what his name was, who ran up and then shoved Rudolph, you a clown, bro. You a punk. Bottom line, what was the purpose of that? Then he says, well, I'm trying to, you know, protect my boy. How? Mason Rudolph turned around almost as if he was looking towards the ref. Like, yo, I just got hit in the head and then got pushed. That is, that's inexcusable. And he only got suspended for a game. I would have suspended him for maybe like three. I'd give him the same thing that Pouncey got. Because what, what are you actually doing? That's like somebody who fighting on like East 58th. They fight on East 58th. Somebody get pushed on East 59th. And then they talking about, yo, I was just trying to defend the dude on East 50. Goddamn battery died. But as I was saying, the fight is over there. I'm not understanding the mindset that this brother had. But all in all, Miles Garrett took it way too far. And people keep looking, as I said earlier, people keep looking at it from the streets mindset. Yo, if you don't start nothing, there won't be nothing. There's a difference. There's a huge difference. That's, pull, that's like pulling a gun to a damn sword fight. That's like freaking... What, what was I, I i don't understand how anybody can try to justify this man's actions like I, I don't get it i really don't do i am i saying that mason rudolph is innocent no two things can be right miles garrett can be wrong mason rudolph can also be wrong in the same breath but we can also acknowledge the fact that the end result does not justify the catalyst for the entire situation 
Okay, it don't have to be yo, you want this side or you want this side. Just acknowledge if something is wrong and Garrett took it way too far and him being suspended for the rest of the season. He lucky he not getting sued for, you know, battery or assault or deadly weapon or all this other stuff. If Rudolph went to his lawyers and said, yo, I want this man jailed for his action, he literally has a case. Literally has a case. I don't think we've ever seen anything like this in the NFL. I don't think we ever have. We've seen brawls before. We've seen people get stomped before. This is something completely different. Because I ain't seen nobody grab no helmet and start swinging. If you watch Last Chance You on Netflix, I believe it was on. And you saw that ending of season one. Where there was a brawl on the field. And dude started swinging helmet. This man life could have ended on the field right there. Literally, I don't live in the what ifs, but this is something that literally could have happened. We could talk about somebody's intention all day. We could say Mason Rudolph may or may not have said this. We could say Mason Rudolph may or may not kick them in the groin. We could say Mason Rudolph's intention may or may not have to been, you know, pulling the helmet off. Because if you look at the hand placement, it looked like someone was really shoving the neck, but the helmet started to look as if it was getting dislodged. We didn't see a hand go into, you know, the, the this area of the helmet and begin to like pull. It was more of like a twist sort of area. Like, yo, get off of me. Yo, I'm upset. The man just had a terrible game. So if it was him who took a helmet and swung it, then by all means, give him a bigger time suspension and everything. Garrett was already winning. Game was already done. He was. This was one of them situations where antagonizing somebody turns into the other person now antagonizing you. Y'all both tight, and then you take it to a whole other level. This, the I I, I just I, I I don't get it. I don't get it. Ending thoughts. Miles Garrett suspension for the rest of the year. He got appeal next year. I agree with Marquise Pouncey three game suspension. I understand why he's probably gonna appeal it. Get maybe a game or two games, whatever the case is. But given the fallout, him punching and kicking Miles Garrett, I support him in doing it because you gotta support your boy. But him getting suspended, I respect it. Um, the 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 other guy who shoved Rudolph after the fact. I don't think some pieces should only be suspended for a game. I'd give him two, three games just for that because it had nothing to do with nothing. And Mason Rudolph, I think he should probably get a game for trying to dislodge the helmet. Now, regardless of how I feel about it, me thinking that he was trying to, he didn't get his hand underneath, regardless, you the catalyst of this whole thing, you should get one game. But Mason, uh, but, but Miles Garrett took it way too far. That's the end of it. Let me know what the hell you think about it in the comment section. All right? But if you defending him, I think you wild. That's just what I feel. But if you have a justifiable reason as to why you feel that way, let's have some dialogue in the comments.